Hello, I'm Billy Hoffman from Rigor. On this edition of Web Perfectionist, we're going to take a look at source maps and how they can help us with minified files. So minification, as we covered in a previous Web Perfectionist, really is just taking CSS and JavaScript and HTML, things like that that are text-based and human-readable, and removing things like the white space and new lines and HTML comments and things like that. Basically things that make it easy for a human to read it, strip it all out because the computer doesn't care about it and make a much more smaller streamlined piece of content we can deliver to the browser um, and actually get a benefit out of that. Now, one of the things people always say is, well, it's easy for people to read this content and if you start shipping um, minified files, for example, on CNN, here's a minified uh, JavaScript file that's the uh, basically the the video container. Um, if somebody wants to learn JavaScript, they can't really do this. It's all minified and difficult to read. So we pointed out that all browsers have this really great pretty print function built in where we basically we're undoing the minification and you're actually able to see it again. Now, the problem here is that this is just formatted for you to read. If there were some runtime errors, like we come over here to the console, we see a number of runtime errors. We see, for example, this weird kind of, you know, texture, rendering, whatever that is. Um, if we were having to deal with runtime errors, um, we would just get an exception that would say something like, you know, JavaScript type exception, you know, line two, column 35,000, right? Because this is a huge line. Um, and that's not super helpful. It's not easy for us to, to convert the line and the column number into this formatted original file. Um, and it gets doubly worse if maybe we combined a bunch of files together, being able to get it back to a nice pretty print thing for us to debug in production. So luckily we have this really cool thing called source maps. So let's take a look at this site. We see that only three JavaScript files were loaded when we were rendering this page. Now if we come over here to the sources, we can see this first scripts, it's pretty big, pretty long. Um, but we see that it's got this little definition here called a source maps. And so this file, if we actually come over here, it's this ginormous JSON blob, which is pretty difficult to read. So let's come over here to a beautifier and we can see that this is a source map. What this does is it says, hey, this file scripts.js, it's composed of all these other files here. And here are the names of the things that it exposes. And then this is actually kind of encoded mapping codes that help you translate column and line numbers in this file back into these original sources. So if we come back to this file, we can see that you know app.javascript, this is actually a provided, it even says source mapped from scripts.js. So it the, the browser was able to use that map, pull this stuff out. Now, if you have a map enabled and you needed to debug something, you could set breakpoints in here um, and it would hit it and it would use the map to actually put a breakpoint in this script file. And then when it hit, it would actually come back and let you basically work inside this file instead. So maps are essential for debugging uh, issues in production when you're minifying and concatenating. Um, and so how, how did we automatically get this? Well, you'll see it's just a special comment um, to a file. And what happens is, is in Chrome, if you come over here to settings, you actually can specify, hey, automatically grab JavaScript source maps. The same thing exists for CSS. Um, and so the browser will automatically download them and make it available for you to audit. Now, if we come over here to the Rio Olympics, we see that they have a source map file but if you come to the console, fail to parse. They have a source map, but it doesn't even exist. And what's really cool is if we open this link in a new tab, we have what is possibly the best 404 technical difficulties page where this diver, boom, just busts it up right there because this is a 404, they can't find that page. Um, so, this is a great example of they're combining JavaScript files, they're doing minification on the Olympics website here. This is actually NBC's Olympic site. And they have a source map, but the source map actually wasn't uploaded to the server. So the moral of the story here is if you need to debug um, JavaScript issues in production, which you almost always need to do, um, go ahead, use a source map and upload it. Typical browsers will never even download it. It's not a big deal. It's only going to be for the developers. Um, 
but it's a good thing to have it there because otherwise you won't be able to actually figure out what's going on and you'll just end up like this diver just crashing into the ground.